As you begin exploring ways to automate your workflows with SmartSuite, you'll come across a key term, webhooks. SmartSuite uses webhooks to connect your tools, sync your data, and automate tasks. In this video, we'll look at ways that you can use webhooks to improve your business processes with SmartSuite. Hi there, I'm Alex Knowles from automationhelpers.com, and we help companies like yours get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. Firstly, let's look quickly at what webhooks actually are, and then we'll look at how you can use them with SmartSweep to automate your business processes. A webhook is basically a digital messenger. When something changes in one tool, like a status update in SmartSweep, it instantly notifies another tool, keeping everything synced without any manual effort. Webhooks are often used by developers to connect and integrate tools, but don't let the mention of developers intimidate you. They're actually much easier than you might think. While direct integrations, which we've covered in other videos, are an option, with webhooks, you get far more control over the data you work with and the actions you trigger. Previously, triggering webhooks required a manual step, like pressing a button, which we'll look at later. But now, you can configure automations to trigger webhooks automatically when certain conditions are met and things happen in SmartSuite. Let's look at an example. You hired a new employee. Billy Bob, once the employee's onboarding status changes to active in SmartSuite, we can set up a webhook that sends the employee's details to your payroll system, triggers an email that welcomes them on board, and assigns training tasks to the new employee to complete in SmartSuite. We can do much more than that, but let's keep it simple for this video. Before we set up a webhook automation in SmartSuite, we need to decide the target endpoint. Where are we sending the data? Now, this could be any number of tools or platforms. It could be your payroll, QuickBooks, zero. It could be directly to your Google Workspace. What we're going to do so you can better visualize and understand webhooks is we are going to send it to an automation tool, specifically Zapier. Now, this is possible to do with any number of automation tools, like here we have make.com and Pipedream, but I think Zapier will be the easiest for you to get an introduction to webhooks. So, what we're gonna do for the first example is look at creating an employee in QuickBooks. We're going to send data using a webhook from SmartSuite to Zapier, which then we'll be able to use in other steps within Zapier. Here we are in the Zapier dashboard. We just need to create a zap, so we'll select that button in the top left, zaps then we can lean on copilot and ask it to actually create a templatized automated workflow for us using a webhook but for the sake of understanding how to use webhooks in zapier let's just use the trigger event now the trigger event is what launches our automated workflow and as we both know that's going to be a webhook request so we'll add webhooks here now do note that you will need to be on the pro plan for zapier something i also will note is that automations aren't entirely free within SmartSuite. I'll make sure to leave a link to this particular web page in the description of the video, but basically you'll need to understand how many runs are you actually going to be doing each month. You'll need to take a look at which plan you are on and then check what your run limit is per month. Perhaps you don't want to eat into that, so you'll need to look at other ways for you to automate your flows, and that could be through Zapier. However, running the webhook automation, that will count as a run. And that doesn't mean that this automation itself is one run. That means if you have 100 employees, their status has changed to active, that kicks off the automation, then you have 100 runs. But let's continue looking at how we can set up the webhook. So we've got the webhook here. Now all we want to do is select the trigger event, and that's just going to be catch hook. You can catch the raw hook, but let's just go with this to keep things nice and formatted, making it easier for us in Zapier. We'll go continue and then we'll leave child key for now. We don't need to worry about that, but this is gonna run and actually generate a webhook URL for us. So if we jump into SmartSuite and then for our solution, we select automations. We'll first want to set up the automation trigger event in SmartSuite, which is going to be when a record is updated. We wanna make sure that it's the right table, employees, then the condition. What actually triggers this? Well, this is going to be when or where the status is equal to active. So we've got the condition here. We've told SmartSuite only run this automation when the status is updated and equal to active. So now let's add the action, which is going to be a webhook request. So we'll select that and then it will come up with the request URL. That's what Zapier just gave us. So we'll select it here. We're gonna copy and we'll just paste that there. 
Next, we have the HTTP method. I won't get into details on this, but I will leave some links to Smart Suite's API and webhook documentation in the description of this video. Basically, the get request is when you want to pull data directly back into Smart Suite using your webhook request URL. We are going to be sending data to Zapier. So we are just gonna use the post method. Then from here, we can quickly run a test by selecting the test step and then hitting run test. But we will need to configure our webhook a bit more. We're not actually passing any data currently. So we jump back and we're actually going to need to include some URL parameters, headers. Now we've also got the request content, the response content, all of these will need to be added in order to add our automation. As we can see here, those fields are required. So let's start with the URL parameters. This is going to be how we are quickly passing the data from SmartSuite over to Zapier. So we're going to add a parameter and let's just do something simple like first name. So we're adding that key into the URL parameter. Next, we wanna pull in or pass over our smart suite data. So we're gonna select this icon here, and then we're going to search for the name field, select that, and we're able to split the name field into the first name and last name, and middle name as well. So we've got the first name key in the URL parameter, that is equal to the value in our smart suite record, the first name. So let's add one for the last name. Again, we'll pull in name, and then we'll select last name. Okay, let's run a test here to see if the data is being passed through. So we've got the URL parameters, but we will need to provide some dummy data, some example data. So let's say Billy Bob run test. Okay, so automation completed successfully. We can see here what the available fields are. Let's jump over to Zapier. Now we'll want to test this trigger, basically test the webhook, see if any requests have been made. And we can see here that we've got two records created today. That was that earlier one that we didn't actually include any data. And here's the second one, which will pull through the first name, Billy, and the last name, Bob. So yes, creating direct integrations using automation tools or even the native integrations in SmartSuite are possible. However, you have far more control over the data you can use and the actions you can set up using webhooks. From here, we'd be able to add an action step. So we'll quickly just look at QuickBooks, adding a employee. So we'll go QuickBooks online, action event will be create an employee. Here we go, employee. You'll want to add your account. I'll just quickly run through this. Then we'll need to provide a given name and a family name. So we'll pull through the first name and we'll pull through that last name, of course. For you to add your employee to your payroll, you're going to need things like their date of birth, their address, email, maybe their social security number, and so on. You'll need to include those fields. But for the sake of this example, I'm just quickly gonna run, continue, and then we'll select to test the step. Then if we jump into our employees in QuickBooks, we can see that Billy Bob has been successfully created. That was a super simple example. We just looked at sharing data through the URL parameters. Let's look at something more complex now. So we're gonna jump back out of the test state and we've got here the request URL, the URL parameters, but we've also got the encoding and the request and response content. Now the request content won't exist for a get request, which we will look at next. Select get and waiting for that to load. We can see we've got the response content. So let's select the format that we want to receive this. This is going to be JSON object. And we'll notice a field appear below it now. If we were doing a post method, we would have that same flow. As we can see, we would select how we are sending the data. Now, I will tell you to set up an automation, a webhook automation, you will need to set this. So if you are sending a post request, just redo those steps for the URL parameters in the request content. Select a field. If you've got a text value, select text and then pull in that records field from SmartSuite. If it's a number value, then use the number. But we're just gonna go with get. Let me jump back up here, change that to get. Now an example for using a get method, let's say you are using clay. You've got lead data in your SmartSuite and you want to enrich it and get some more info on your leads. Well, you'd run a get request. You'd be able to send a request to clay 
ask for a response, and then pull that data back into SmartSuite. But something really important for us to ensure is that firstly, we're giving the right authorization to tell Clay or whatever tool you're making a request from, hey, I'm allowed to take some data. And secondly, you're correctly formatting your field keys in order to tell your tool, for me, Clay, hey, I want to pull this specific data. So we're just gonna quickly remove those URL parameters. And for the response content, we are going to select, you guessed it, JavaScript object notation object or JSON object. Um, for then, we're gonna select the field. So this will be a text field. We'll look at grabbing the first name. So we'll go text, uh, property name, we'll just say first name. But what we want to ensure that we do correctly is that we jump into Clay's API and we check how that key should be formatted. So if we scroll down here, perhaps we'll be able to find it somewhere easily. Now, of course, depending on the tool that you are making a request for, how you format your keys in the URL parameter and in the request and response body, it's going to change. You want to jump into the API documentation for your tool and find out. I know for Clay, if we jump back into the setup that I'm able to pull through the name and then I'll select the field. It's going to be a text. If I was going to pull through the last name, again, it would be text, save. And then from there, I would pull in the email, probably go with an array, save, and so on. And once you are happy and completed setting up your webhook, you would want to switch that on. Okay, so we've had a look at webhook automations with SmartSuite, but what about triggering a webhook request when a button is clicked? Here we have Automation Helper's content calendar. Within it, we're managing each of our content pieces. Even this, SmartSuite webhooks. We've created some buttons within our record in order for us to automate some tasks. Now, here we have the Generate Folder button. If we modify this, we can see how we've set up a webhook to trigger when it is clicked. We'll jump into the Edit Formula section here, which allows us to do a lot more with URLs. So we'll select that and we can see that we've got a particular webhook here, which we are triggering through Pipedream. We're also passing the following data. We've got the record ID, we've got the Google folder ID, the brief or script and our video number. You'll notice that we've included some other formulas here. These functions are basically ensuring that our URL is clean and formatted and structured correctly. But what happens when we actually click this button? Well. We've created an automated workflow in Pipedream so that when this webhook request is triggered, we automatically create a folder in Google Drive. Within that, we create another folder for our final content files. We rename the folder and we link it here. So if we select the generate folder button, we can see that the webhook request has been created and it's been a success. So if we jump back into our record and our calendar, we'll notice here that the Google folder becomes populated with that linked and newly generated Google folder. So how can you set this up? Well, it's pretty easy. Jump into your solution and a specific table, adding a button field at the end. Then let's follow that same process using Zapier earlier. We're just gonna change this to send a welcome email. We'll leave the URL until we grab it from Zapier. This is that same one we used earlier. So we'll copy that. Then we'll paste it here. And we're actually gonna jump into URL formula so that we can create a clean and beautiful looking URL. So we're gonna use the concat function, which brings everything together and makes it one beautiful URL. We'll paste that there. And we're going to need to start our query string. So similar to the URL parameters we set up before, except we're kind of manually doing it now. So we'll do first name is equal to and then we're going to add a comma and pull in our name field. So we'll notice on the left here, we've got some fields we can pull in. Let's scroll down and we've got name. So that's the record ID. We've pulled it in. Now we've already set up a URL. So let's test this again and see how it's coming through. We will need to add a comma. Let's apply that, add the field. And then for Billy Bob, let's send a welcome email. 
This is just the webhook request first though. We can see it's been a success. So if we jump into Zapier, let's see if we can find some new records. Boom, request D, first name, Billy Bob. Now notice that the spacing has disappeared in Billy Bob. If we want to fix that, we can jump back in, edit or modify the button. Then all we need to do, again, open the URL formula editor and we want to replace here in this step, name any spaces with the encode of 20%. We want to create a replace function for name so that whenever there's a space, it's replaced with the encoding of 20%. Let's apply that again. Make sure that we set that up correctly by running another test. Send a welcome email. Was a success pull through new records, request E, boom, there we go, we've included that. Then all we need to do is add a step, head to Gmail and pull that in. Of course, if you jump into your automations, you'll notice that you can actually do this directly through SmartSuite. If we just quickly add a new automation, the trigger, we'll ignore that for now, but we'll notice the trigger will be when a record matches a condition, we'd set it up for the button, and then we'd want to actually send under integrations. We've got Slack as well, but we can also send an email directly from SmartSuite. Then you could jump in and you could add a new SmartSuite task within Zapier or set it up within automations to add that new employee to a training task. Well, I hope that helped. Webhooks, while they might seem intimidating, are pretty simple once you break it down. Now, if you need help automating parts of your business or setting up a work management system, don't hesitate to reach out to us at automationhelpers.com. Our team of experts are offering a free 30-minute consultation, so book yours today.